As the Israel-Hamas war continues, some families of the Israeli hostages have been calling on governments, including Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, to reach a deal to bring their loved ones home. Michael Levy's younger brother Orr was taken on October the 7th. His sister-in-law, Inev, was killed, leaving behind their two-year-old son. Michael Levy joins us in studio this morning here on CP24 Breakfast to talk about this. Michael, I can't imagine the difficulty for you, for your family, uh, for, of course, not only the loss that you've had, but the uncertainty about knowing what's happening with your younger brother. How have you been managing? I mean, I see the poster, I see the teddy bear. I've, I've seen some other interviews you've done, but how do you continue to hold that hope that Orr will come home? I wake up every morning uh, with a feeling that uh, I have one mission in life, and it's to bring little Almog, his father, back. Mm -hmm. I mean, I carry this teddy bear mm. with me all the time uh, to remind me that even if it's difficult for me, and it is, mm -hmm. I have something that is much bigger than my feelings. Uh, there's a little boy, a two-year-old boy who already lost his mother yeah. and didn't get a hug from his parents for 111 days. Yeah. Yeah, it's a devastating situation, Michael. And, you know, we're talking about your baby brother, someone who you called, you know, the annoying genius uh, computer whiz who started his own company. And, you know, looking at that poster of Orr, y you talk about his smile and you say, you know, that's just not him posing. That's him all the time. Tell us more about what kind of a person he was or is, I um, should say. Yeah. Uh, as you said, he is the annoying genius. <laughs> For me, as the older brother, it was always difficult to see how easily things came to, to him, but at the same time, I was so proud to see it. Uh, and yeah, and like you said, always smiling, always surrounded by friends. Einav and Almog were, the whole, were his whole life. He uh, did everything for them. And I know that now, he thinks about Einav mm -hmm. and he's worried about Almog. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Michael, I understand you've just arrived from Israel and we saw over the weekend and we've seen in the last 111 plus days or so uh, growing protests, growing discontent amongst even the Israeli population with how uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's government is sort of handling the hostage situation. There's obviously uh, a lot of military action, but not a lot of action, it seems, in sort of getting those hostages home, bringing them home as the, as the cry is going. What are your concerns and what are you hearing and feeling from other Israelis about how this is being handled, how the hostages, in fact, are being prioritized? at this point? I think that what uh, we see right now is not a different message. It's not a more aggressive approach. It's just a way of some families to show how bad they want their loved ones back. Uh, there are more than 100 families. And it's only natural that uh, some will have different views of things. Uh, but the uh, message is the same message, uh, mm. and it stayed the same message from the beginning. We want them back mm -hmm. as soon as possible, and that's what we are looking for. This is our demand, mm -hmm. and the fact that they are not here right now, back safe with us, yeah. means that we all need to do more. Me personally, the media, the Israeli government, the Prime Minister of Israel, foreign governments, we all need to do more. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm here. I want everyone to understand that all and the rest of the hostages are real people with families and hopes and dreams. Yeah. And the only crime was that mm -hmm. Owen and I wanted to celebrate peace and love in a music festival. Yeah. yeah. Michael, give us an idea of what your day looks like. I can't imagine what the last three months have been like for you since you found out that your brother and his wife w w was taken. But what do you do every day in terms of calling people, talking people, talk to people, and you know, trying to rally the support to get your loved ones home? What, what does the day look yeah, like? I, I keep saying that uh, there's the old Michael of before October 7th and the new Michael after October 7th, sometimes I look at myself in the mirror and I don't even recognize myself. 
uh, this is what I, what I do for 111 days. I barely sleep. I travel around the world in delegation. This is actually my sixth time abroad mm. in less than two months. Mm. I'm, I talk to politicians. I talk to diplomats, to media, to whoever is willing to hear the story. And you know, it has its cost. Yeah. I have three little girls. Wow. Uh, they, I don't even see them. Yeah. Uh, even if I'm at home, I'm not there because yeah. I'm always thinking what's next? Mm -hmm. How can I improve? How can I do something better to bring all back faster? Mm -hmm. It so breaks my heart. Michael, it must have been, and it clearly is, an excruciating 111 days or so. Appreciate your efforts here, and we're really thinking about you and your family and hope that Orr uh, comes home soon, along with the rest of the hostages as well. So thanks for joining us here uh, on so CB24 Breakfast this morning and, and sharing his story and your story as well. Thanks for the time today.